Okay, I wanted to show you guys really quick how to um, get the bottom mapped in real quick. Um, so you could grab a, a round brush or a filbert. I'm getting a bigger brush. This is about a size 9. Um, always get it wet first, right? Tap off your water. Um, I'm going to mix up some ground cover and I'm going to do a ground that goes into the background. And again, I need to follow the same color patterns that I have. So it's going to be lighter back here and it's going to come up and get darker over on this side. So I'm going to start with my lights and I'm just going to put in my, my background for these background trees. All right. And I'm just going to keep increasing. Now you can actually draw in how far back you want your ground to go. Tone. Sorry, you guys are going to hear me hitting the actual tripod arm because <laughs> my paintbrushes are long. But I don't have the proper rigging system yet to do this with um, to do this upright and on my pal or on my um, easel. And it doesn't look right to you guys then, from, so I'm actually keeping it like this for you all. You can see better. Now you'll see I'm kind of going back and forth, keeping it kind of bumpy, blending as I go. Um, and I have a method to my madness for why I'm doing that. Okay, so you guys see that? Because here's the deal: I'm gonna I'm gonna actually add in more to this with it. You can probably hear my family talking because on COVID break almost everybody's home because you can't help it that everybody is here. Alright, so I'm going to go grab my smaller brush that I was doing some of the trees with or you can go even smaller. You could switch over to, uh, this is like a size zero or one. Get it wet first, right? Dip off some of the water and with those same areas that I've got the color mixed already to those tones, I'm just going to add in some foliage down here, some grasses and stuff. Um, I have another one, and I'll put the picture up for that, of uh, one I've done before, and it had snow. So you guys could do snow, and that's really easy as well. It's a lot easier. I just thought it'd be fun to put actual twigs and branches and grasses, you know, things you have in the woods. And it's a really light stroke. And it's kind of like a flicking motion and I'm barely touching the brush to the ground. Okay. Um, Man, you know, I wish I would have given you guys, well, I wish, I wish a lot of things. I wish we weren't on break because I wish I could hand out some canvas paper. So if you guys, that's another good thing. If you want to practice your strokes, you can practice it on regular paper. But if you can pick up a pad of canvas paper, it's really not that expensive. It's like maybe 8 to $12 depending on the, the sales and where you find it. So you can check Jerry's Artorama. You can check... Uh, all different places in, uh, let's see, Cheap Joe's, Jerry's Art Mama, and Dick Blick. Probably the most reliable for me. Well, they're all really good, but, um, I tend to, it seems like, buy more from, uh, Dick Blick or Jerry's or Amazon. Um, right, I've been neglecting this side, so I'm going to come over here to this side now. Get some, uh, grass in over here. 
So you guys get that idea. And I'll finish out my grasses. If you have a fan brush, um, then I do suggest if you want to do the grasses to go for it with the fan brush. Um, you want to make sure you don't overload the paint. You can even come and double check it on some paper towel really quick. Flick it. It's not my favorite fan brush, but it'll work. And you flick upward, and it gives you a nice light grassy thing. You just want to make sure you got enough paint on. And then I'll show you something too where you can do shorter grasses or a look up snow. I'll show you guys that in another section. Let me finish this. Okay, now that we got that laid in, um, I want to map in once again an even closer section of ground. Um, I'm actually going to map it in with my dark blue, a darker shade than I have been, just because it's going to really help me see it right now. Because And I'm also going to use that really deep, dark color. Sorry. It's really going to help me map in that deep, dark color that I'm going to be using. Uh, I want it to be like a little knobby hill coming in here. I can even do this to map it in and decide this is how it's going to be. You see that? And it's going to feel weird that you're doing that and you're not necessarily covering up your old stuff. You're just creating more natural look. Okay. Right down to that edge. But the nice thing is when you do this with the dark color is when you come in to do either snow or grass, it'll pop it and give it a depth. We're going to come in with a really light color for up front, and we're going to map in our tree, which will be lovely too. All right. Quick side note for you guys. Um, when you're going to mix up a color to use on your trunk, some of you I know grab some brown, and you can lighten your brown with a little bit of white or yellow um, if you have it. But I wanted to do a quick side note on how to make a nice uh, neutral toned gray. Um, and one of the things you can do is mix your red, a red or a yellow together. All right. And then come on over to some blue and start playing around with your mixing. And normally I encourage you guys to use your palette knives, right? But I'm just in a hurry. All right, so right here I have a brown that is mixing up. I did not need a lot of blue. Right there, can you guys see? I've got my brown. If I want to lighten it a little bit, I could add a little white if I wanted. I really don't, you don't need much because I don't want to. I actually don't want to lighten it up too much. I'm going to add a little more blue tone. But go slow until you get the color you want. I wanted a grayish brown. And I'm kind of heading that way. All right. That is kind of what I was hoping for. So I hope you guys can see that. And I'm going to go wipe off the back of my brush now. And I will come back and show you how to paint it on your tree. All right, here we go. I've got my uh, grayish brown and I'm getting my brush wet. I've got my paints sprayed because I'm trying to keep them going. And I'm going to show you. Now, again, we're going to talk about our light source. It's over here. It's coming in to this side of the tree, right? And it's really kind of more behind the tree. So as I paint this edge, I want to go. I don't need a lot, right? And, um, on top of that, um, remember the, one of the reasons I like painting that black in is it 
picks you can now pick up the rough edges of the actual texture of paint on the canvas um, to kind of help you with that gnarly area of the tree um, and I want you guys to go slow and make sure your brush isn't too watered down your paint isn't too watered down um, sometimes there's too much water in your brush and you gotta like wipe your brush off of it but I'm going in small short light strokes as I come down on my tree okay this is also a good time to see like do I like the color of my tree trunk color I'm not super big on it at the moment I think I'd want a cooler tone this is a little too too warm so this is a good time to pause mix in um, some cool tones to your colors uh, take in a chance to uh, cool this down use the back of your brush don't use your brush like I am I'm in a hurry though all right we'll speed this up all right I've got this a little more into the tone I'd like now I'm gonna clean my brush off a little bit grab some paint Come back in again and do it again. Again, I'm going short, light, little brush strokes. Probably use your smallest brush so you don't end up with what I just did, which was I accidentally just left a glop. So use your small brush, especially because you're going to be going into these small limbs. Right now, though, I'm just going to capture. Uh, the bigger ones and then I'll come back in with a smaller brush okay now here's the deal do your big ones first and just keep reminding yourself of where that lights coming from so go, if I go up here now I'm gonna this is all dry you definitely don't want to do this when it's wet bring this down so you guys can see better but I'm gonna go up this one right here first right along that edge Go in a bumpy fashion because this is bark. So you want little open spots where it's not showing. Now this tree limb is tall. Since it's tall and the lights kind of come in like this, you know, I'm going to go on the bottom edge of this side. And I'm not going to go too far because again, smaller paintbrush will be better. Okay. I hope you guys can see that. It's really, you can see the edges there. And again, I'm gonna stay over here. And then you see how these two divide? Then you do, again, this right side first of your tree. that you can see it better. Again, it's better to go rough. If you just lay down a really smooth line, um, that's one of the things I see people make mistakes with. If you leave a really smooth line, um, then it doesn't actually end up looking like a tree because trees are raw. If they have uh, bark, even smoother ones, they still have bumps and edges. And so I'm going to encourage you guys to, but now the other thing I, wanted, I want you to do rough. So you're breaking it up. You're leaving space for that bark. But the thing I don't want to see you guys do is I don't want to see you do something like this. So I'll show you what not to do. If you do this, where you're like, perfect straight lines, which is really hard for me to make myself do. Doesn't look as good, like I'm gonna have to cover that up. But if you do like that rough edge and you're painting really light so the canvas is picking it up, it looks a little more realistic, okay? Also, don't do this. Like if you're doing the bumps like I'm talking about, can you guys hear the bread machine? 
Um, don't do this. Like, boop, 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 boop. You guys see how that, you can see literally the pattern. Dink, 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 dink. Don't do that. So those are my suggestions. Um, this is really thick. It's too thick. It means that the light would actually be coming from like right in here, up here by the grass. So I'm going to have to take the black, but I just want to show you what not to do. And I'm just going to continue on this process. I'm going to get a smaller, uh, a smaller brush as I go out into the further things. Um, because I'm actually going to put foliage over the tree though, I'm not going to be uber concerned about um, these areas way out here because it's most of this is actually going to get covered. I just want to get the main gist of the trunk um, and the bigger limbs because uh, it won't be as hard when I have to do little touch-ups here and there. Um, if you ever feel like you got it too thick, you can always come in and kind of smudge it or fade it out with your fingers, stuff like that. It's really pretty easy. Just keep reminding yourself, where is this light going to hit? Um, is this light going to hit from this side or this side? Look at your painting. Check it out. Okay? All right. All right, here we go. We're going to add in foliage. And so I got my handy dandy fan brush out again. And I've got black paint or you can mix up a dark bluish black. Um, either one. What, what do you have on hand? Um, and I've thinned it back out so that it's not too thick and I'm going to start mapping in foliage and so here's the deal everybody say no to circles no circle trees I don't want to see circle trees I don't want to see uh, a total triangle I want to see trees in their natural shape and right now I know you can't necessarily look outside um, but go look them up online and see the different fun shapes. This is a tree out in the wilderness. It is not being pruned and trimmed. And so I want you to think about all the erratic ways that leaves grow in clumps and groups off of these limbs. And so maybe I'll start over here. And I'm going to start putting in groupings for my leaves. And we've talked about scumbling before. Right? And the reason I'm going to go with black first is, you know how it pops so nicely with this bottom here? In this bottom section of the grass, it popped. That's the same thing we're going to do. And you don't want to overkill it. You're just starting to put in where you think these groupings and clumps are. So yes, you're covering up some of your amazing limb work. All right? But it's okay. Go slow. Step back every once in a while and be like, okay, I like that, or I don't. Maybe I move something over. But I'm going to start on this side just because I feel like it's a little more forgiving. And okay, go from there. And maybe this limb goes a little bit lower down, back over here. It's just kind of fun. All right. Uh, more paint. And let's go up from here. We get more thick and over here we're gonna get some clumpings that maybe come actually in front of our limbs here maybe there's a group of limbs coming straight out at us so I need to cover some of my awesome trunk work and limb work but that's how you keep it looking like but do you see how I'm still leaving gaps and holes I need you guys to plan holes leave holes everybody say leave holes you don't leave holes it just doesn't end up looking real trees have gaps um, this is kind of looking like it's maybe spring and things are just starting to bloom out and so I don't need a ton of leaves I'm just gonna like let it be that it's a, a tree that's just starting it's it's grouping that was such a pretty limb I really liked it right there and I just covered it embrace it it's okay Um, always remember to keep your paints wet and just continue on with this process and stop every once in a while, stop, pull back, look for where you maybe need to change up where your groupings are. Now I am changing directions on this and when I come back in with another brush, um, let me add more scumble marks and some actual tiny leaves in, in sections. All right. Pretend there's a limb back here on this side. All 
it's just kind of fun. Easy, easy peasy, you guys. Going right off the canvas again. Please do not neglect the section up here. You want to come in on all sections. Um, you don't want to neglect some of them. I'm going to take a break and I'm going to check it out, see if I like what's happening. Do I feel like it's like unbalanced? Is it still helping me go this way with the lights? Um, do I have any areas that just need more or is it too patterned? Like right here, it's almost too patterned. Do you guys see how structural that is? It's like boom, boom. It's almost every inch. So I'm going to have to change that because that's just too much uniformity. And I talked to you guys about how that's bad. So maybe I will actually combine this into a bigger section. I'll still leave a couple gaps in there, but I'm gonna combine it into a bigger section. So it's not so uniform, okay? So I thicken that up. Um, let's see, what about over here? I kind of like it getting sparse over here and trickling down some of the areas. Um, let's see. Let's see if I make this one a little bigger. Thicken this up. On there. It's really fun. This is a really pretty painting to do as well. If you go uh, pick some new colors, um, you can do cherry blossom trees. You can do fall trees. I'm going to stay in this green realm for my little spring thing going on. Um, but just something to think about. All right, I don't want to overwork this. So let me wrapping this up in a minute here. Now I'm turning my fan brush sideways just to drop in some little leaves and we may go back in and we'll put a few little twiggy branches sticking out okay it's kind of fun now where you have a close branch those leaves might be bigger that are coming off the tree All right. I think I should stop pretty soon here. All right, there's my there's my tree, you guys. I'm pretty pumped. All right, I'm gonna go wash my fan brush, and I'll see you in a minute. Make sure my greens are still moist and that I have enough color, because I want to come in with uh, two different tones of green now, two or three. But I would say mainly we just want a medium tone and a bright tone. So mix those up. Also make sure they dry like this. It's time to blow dry it or uh, just walk away for a little bit, let it dry. And then if you walk away and let it dry, you know what's nice about that is that you can come back and be like, okay, I like what I did. Or you can come back and be like, ooh, I wanna fix whatever. Okay, so sometimes it's just good to have that moment to walk away from your paintings. But I will see you in a minute once mine's dry and I got my greens mixed up. I'm going to go again for that similar tone that I used for the grass. And then I'm actually going to go for this mid medium tone. Okay, you can see what I've been doing here. I'm using that darker medium tone here. All right, loading up my fan brush. I'm not going to go all everywhere with it. I'm just picking a few of the areas because I still want that black areas to show through. I'm also paying attention to my holes. Remember, we don't want to cover those up. So I'm just coming back in on my already planned out areas where I want leaves. And I'm actually doing something different this time. I'm literally laying the brush down. Okay, so instead of doing something like, sorry, I need to move this. Instead of doing something where you're touching the brush like this, I'm laying the brush down. So I'm using the entirety of the brush shape um, as I lay in these sections. All right. And again, you want to wipe your brush off. You don't want it too thick. If it's too thick, then um, we just miss um, the leafiness. 
okay? Now the reason that we do some of these deeper tones is because they're just helping. It's more depth. Uh, there's shadows, there's leaves that are darker than others. I'm even turning my brush sideways. I don't want it to get too, uh, uh, fan shape. Like you see how you can literally see here. So I'm going to change that up by turning my brush sideways, gently knocking in some color. All right. So I didn't put it everywhere. I did put it in some certain clumps. Some I left a little more open. Um, and now what I'm going to do is finish up this kind of sideways brushing where I'm getting that erotic kind of shape in. I'm going to do my little leaves here. Um, and now I'm going to come in with that bright green. So again, you guys are going to let this dry. You're going to come in with your light green. And we're going to pop it even more. All right. Lots of depth to our trees. So just look for areas where you need to break up the actual fan shape that you blade in by turning your brush sideways. All right. All right, have fun. All right, once it's dry and you really do want it dry, um, the reason is because if it's not dry and you try to come in with this light color, it's just going to mix in instead of sitting on top and giving it you giving you that pop of color that you want to help create depth in your leaves on your tree. So that's why we always let it dry because it also means that as we put the brush down, all these little ridges of paint catch it and help the canvas itself, you know, and the buildup of paint catches things and helps it look more realistic, which we like because we're kind of aiming for that today, right? So this is one of our last stages of the painting. You guys are almost done. Celebrate. Um, and I've got my really light yellowy green here because I really want it to look super springy um, and bright. Um, and so, you know, you can use lots of yellow. Um, you could throw a little white in there if you want um, to get the color that you're aiming for. But again, you want to spritz your paints, keep them wet, and wipe your brush off on the edge of your palette or your plate. And then we're going to come in. And so with this part, you want to think about this is the brightest area. This is where the light's coming from. So where is it really going to light up my, my limbs? What ones are going to be the brightest? Um, and so you're going to think about where the light is catching. So maybe you're like right here. We've got like some light coming in. Okay. Right in here. So you're imagining where is your brightest areas. Now the good news is, is if you went too bright, you can always at this point adjust. You can adjust and add a little dark to your color. You can take some time because again, this is not done. Stone, it's up to you. All right. This is also where you can turn your brush sideways. Do some checks on your uh, shaping. I really don't like what I did there. It's kind of looking cruddy. I might come in again into that area and change it up a wee bit. All right. I'm going to actually just keep using the edge of my brush, it's slowing me down. But I think that's actually a good thing. So you might want to do that too. So you can see I have my brush edge, but I still want the, the way that that frame brush works with those spread out bristles, I still like that. I just want a little less because this is the punches of light to my areas. Some of these areas are left pretty black, so they're really going to punch up that light color. Oop, see what I did there? Big blob. 
one of those moments where you can use your tissue with a little bit of water on it. Kind of blot it up a little bit. I'm going to do a drop of water right in here. See if I can't lift some of this up a little bit. Soften it a little bit. And then I can come back in with a darker color. It's very forgiving. Happy accidents. Don't freak out. Go slow. Step back. Remember how I told you guys you could put your painting on the floor? As long as you don't have a dog, it's going to run over it. We have dogs. So there's a chance. Um, you could leave it on your table. Stand up on the chair if you're allowed to do that at home. If you're not, don't get me in trouble with your parents. But here we go. And honestly, you guys, I really want to see your paintings when you're done. Because... I'm excited about your awesome masterpieces. Okay. Got a little too much air. Especially because this is going to be a little darker on that side. So. I'm going to go a little bit less over here. It's just peeks in of color. Because the side would be getting the concentration of it. Alright. So you guys see what we're doing here? most I've ever used Kleenex in a painting. Alright, um, I'm going to come back to you in, once I get my brush properly washed off. Because remember, we want to wash these brushes off and you want to get to the ferrule. So if you got some paint here on that um, ferrule of the brush, then you need to clean that off as well. You don't want that paint gunked in there. So make sure you're taking care of your brushes. You don't want to leave this brush all yucky and wet and have it dry on you while you're finishing up your painting and then you don't have a fan brush anymore. How sad would that be? It'd be so sad. But I do want to show you how you can use other brushes. So make sure you clean that brush really well. That's what I'm doing. And then you can come in with another brush. All right. And I get it wet first before I hit the paint. Get it nice and souped up with our paint color here. Now I want to come in with a darker color to break this up, right? And we've talked about scumbling before. Just coming in. It's really dark. And scumbling is just being erratic with your paintbrush, basically. Alright, so I'm breaking this back up. Lowering the tonality and some deeper color. I like it better. All right. Now with this brush, now you can do touch-ups, um, and you can get your really tiny brush out if you want, and you can just do touch-ups where you have some of your brighter leaves that are coming down here. A clump that's coming down low. You guys see that? Yeah. So I'm going to capture some highlights on these little tiny ones that I have. And I'm going to break that one up too once I'm done doing this. Step back every so often, check it out, see how you're doing. Remember to go off your painting. Don't neglect these guys way over here. I'm just going to put a light dusting up in this corner. Because you don't want to forget, there's, there's a tree up here too, you guys. So you see how we're doing this? Now this guy and this guy, I want to break them up a little bit. You can see my fan brush marks too much. So I'm getting that really deep, dark, blackish green. I'm just going to come in here and break it up a bit. So it's not so intense. And you can't see my fan brush. Deep, intense green. Okay. 
guys, we are almost done. I mean, all you do now is you just add in your finishing marks. Now, you do not need to cover up every little bit of black, okay? Because that's the shadow leaves. Those are the leaves that the light is hitting them just right so that they're silhouetted against that, that bright, misty um, color coming in. And so you don't want to cover up all your little black spots at all. Those are what give you the punch and the pop to the painting. It is what makes it what it is. But I do recommend adding in some leaves that are just no branch connecting them, nothing like that. You don't have to worry about that part. They're just leaves that are dripping down. Sometimes there's such tiny little branches, you know, connecting those leaves and stems that you're not going to see those. And, and even in real life, if you go out and you look at trees, you don't, our eyesight is not that insane that we can see every tiny little branch far, far away. Make some over here because really I neglected this edge. So I'm going to pop in some leaves hanging down over here. And the smaller you do the leaf, it's a far away leaf. The bigger you do the leaf, it's closer. Just like Grover back when we're young and we watch Sesame Street near and far. All right, so do your finishing touches. The last thing that I would show you to do is it's okay to have some of those little twigs and branches sticking out. Hopefully you kind of do already because you've um, left these holes and these gaps in your tree and you've done your best to make sure that they are not uh, perfectly spaced out. Let me make my limb go up a little bit here. See how you can change the shape of your tree just by how you add in your leaves. I have decided I want this guy to come out a little bit further here. And a little more erratic. And I'll tell you why. Because I was noticing I got a line again. <laughs> so I'm just using my colors. We've been spritzing them. We're keeping them up to date, right? So I've got my my dark and my lights. All right, it's looking pretty fun. All right, last up smallest brush you have this is a size zero for me so in my acrylics um when i get into other paintings i have a uh, even smaller ones um but i'm just gonna come in with my black um on my paintbrush real tiny here and just in a few places i want to add some character so i'm just gonna put in like literally i'll get this closer literally i'm just gonna come in Make sure this is focused and just add in some twiggy spots so this is a little more difficult to make sure your smaller brush is loaded I'll admit to that but and I'm holding my canvas but okay do you see how much more realistic just adding these little twigs now you're not connecting I'm still gonna leave leaves hanging off like right here, I'm not going to connect that one. I don't want you to connect them all. I'm just saying like poke out some little tiny twigs if you want to make it just a little bit more realistic. If you struggle with getting tiny little limbs, then don't do this. Either practice on a uh, scrap sheet of paper, seeing if you can keep your hands, you know, really light. And if you can't, then don't stress. Don't add it. It's not necessary for you to have these little like pokey limbs coming out. It's just part of a tree. There's just little twigs and, and little new branches that have grown out or maybe are dying off. And, and so they're out there. All right, I'm not neglecting this side. Ooh, see how big that is? I'm just going to use my thumb. And actually what you can do, if you do what I did, I added a big thick one because I bumped it while I was holding it. I just scumbled it back into leaves. All right. When in doubt, scumble over it with your uh, paint and cover a multitude of things. But this is it, you guys. Now you can just check back in. You know, do I need to like rough up this trunk a little more? Do I want to put in that little area where I think there might have been a branch and now there's a hole in the tree? Um, do I want to like pop this grass a little more by adding in some dark grass in here? Maybe you do. 
it's up to you. This is where you step back and you look at it and you say, okay, I like this or I don't like this. Uh, maybe you do want to use some of that blue if you still have it and put in a little bit of foliage on these trees in here that are um, more barren. It's up to you. This is your main focus of your painting. Um, and so this is why, oh my gosh, do you guys see what I did? I dropped black paint on there. This is why I do these things for you. So you can see what to do if you do this. All right, remember how I said wet tissue? If you catch it early, you can get it back off. All right, yay, it's gone. So don't freak out if this happens to you. Um, anyway, this is your main part of your painting. And so that's the one that I want you to really worry about. These guys, they're just like awesome misty trees in the background, catch, you know, caught in the silhouette of like a sunrise. So that's what, we don't have to worry about as much details on these guys. I want you guys to look at this as your masterpiece. Um, I want you to focus on making sure you have that shadow. Um, get your grasses in so they're not all uniform. You don't want them all the same color. It's more fun when you have this depth. Um, actually, this area is going to bug me. And I'll probably want to like deepen it up a little here. Because I like how it is over here. It looks like that mossy new grass. And this is a little too uniform. So I'd want to like break it up a little bit more. Um, this is up to you. This is your painting. This is your tree, your colors, your way, but I really am excited. So please send me photos of your pictures. Show me how it turns out. Um, I'll put a picture up at the end of this one. I'm going to just uh, walk away for a little bit, let it dry, see if there's anything I want to change when I come back. I'm going to keep my paints wet. Um, spritz them. Don't forget to cover them with a uh, saran wrap if you need to. If you don't have your palette, if you have a stay wet palette, you're good to go. But I'm just going to let this dry, come back. I'll take a picture, put it at the end of the video, and stay healthy, stay happy. Um, I've had a lot of trouble with the editing software I was using, so I'm sorry that these are so late. I've probably spent about over 20 hours dealing with some computer issues and other stuff. Fun stuff. So anyways, hopefully um, I don't have any more problems, but we'll see. Take care. I'll see you guys later. Stay happy, stay healthy.